atheist? I am definitely an atheist, yes. And why are you an atheist? Why am I an atheist? Because there is no God. Atheism assumes that you can disprove the existence of a God. Uh, agnostic is a more correct term, but I'm an atheist. Are you an atheist? Uh, yeah. I am an atheist, yeah. I am, yes. I am. So you're not an atheist? Uh, no. So you're leaning that way because of evolution? Yeah. I don't believe in the, there's a guy in the sky that lives in the sky. You believe in evolution? Of course I do, yes. Live science says of Darwinian evolution. It can turn dinosaurs into birds, apes into humans, and amphibious mammals into whales. What Darwin showed in his work on evolution and natural selection is that we don't need to invoke any supernatural force or power to account for the development of life through time on Earth. The ongoing processes that, that are observable in today's world. You think it's a belief? I think it's just fact. I think more like facts. There is too much evidence to ignore. Do you think it's a belief? No, it's science. It's the way it happened. It's logical. You know, all the scientists pretty much agree with it. It's, it's more of a fact. When did you start to believe? Um, when I started to think for myself. When did you start believing? Uh, when I took my first biology class. It all started to make a lot of sense. The teacher made it very, very easy to understand. I generally trust the scientific community. It makes more sense than any religion or anything. The fossils they found of all the, all the cavemen, the homo sapiens, the dinosaurs, it shows clear evidence. I believe in science. What's your major here at this university? Biology. You're a biology major? Yeah. You believe in evolution? Yes. But what's your major? Geology. Chemistry? Biochemistry. Environmental science and policy. I'm a physicist. Biochemistry. Hey, do you believe in evolution? Uh, yes, I do. Do you believe in evolution? Yes, I do. Of course. Yes, I do. I do believe in evolution. Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Are you a strong believer? Yes. Are you a strong believer? Yep. Uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. A scientific method is based on the collection of data through observation and experimentation. Science Daily. Could you give me some observable evidence that evolution is true? Uh, something I don't have to uh, receive by faith. Yeah. Some observable evidence. I mean, take a look at what happened 65 million years ago. Hang on, I can't. That's 65 million years ago. I believe, t yeah, millions of years. So that can't be observed. We can trace the evolution through the fossil record. Could you be specific? Just give me one. Um, uh, between six and seven million years ago. Hundreds of thousands to millions of years? So it's quite a long time. Yes. Millions of years. Yes. So it can't be observed. Evolution is, is not testable over time. We are condemned to live only for a few decades. And that's too slow, too small a time scale to see evolution going on. Richard Dawkins. We see nothing of these slow changes in progress until the hand of time has marked the lapse of ages. Charles Darwin. You've got the canine kind, the coyote, and the domestic dog, and there's the feline kind, which is the cat, the tiger and the kitten, and you've got humankind. So Darwin said there'd be a change of kinds over many years, so could you give me one example of observable ex evidence of a change of kinds? So for instance, the fossil record shows the common ancestors of all carnivores, that cats and dogs were once linked, once united by a common ancestor. How long ago? Uh, this, I believe, was like 60 million years ago. I don't want something I have to accept by faith. I want it to be observable. Observable evidence. Well, I mean, if you're just asking me here on the street, there's not really much I can tell you in terms of observable evidence. Like, we would have to really examine existing data to draw conclusions of our own. I would have to have faith, then. We would have to have some amount of faith. Can you think of any observable evidence for Darwinian evolution? Where he said there'd be a oh, change like of kinds. A monkey to a man, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, a change of kinds. I don't really believe there's any proof for that yet. Well, monkeys are the only ones with the fifth digit, like we have. Well, koalas have a fifth digit. Did you know that? I didn't know that. I think we're evolved from koalas? No. And I went to, like, Washington, D.C. I saw the, they had a whole exhibit just on the... In the Smithsonian? Yeah, in the Smithsonian. Oh, wait, so that is just, like, some stuffed dummies, yeah. like, standing around a fire. I know that everyone talks about the missing link for humans and whatnot. I believe that there are connections that are out there that we haven't found yet. I'm going to trust what those experts did, those experts uh, came up with. I have a strong trust 
and evolutionary ideas based on the evidence presented. Can you think of any observable evidence for Darwinian evolution, a change of kinds? I haven't seen it myself, but I believe what the textbooks tell me about it, so... You've got faith in the experts? I have faith in the experts, yeah. I guess similar to how religious people have faith that God actually exists, I have faith in the experts knowing what they're talking about. The scientific method is, must be observable and repeatable, so could you give me one piece of observable evidence for Darwinian evolution? Okay, I would point to, as one great example is, look at the genetics of the stickleback. What's that? Uh, so stickleback fish are a very interesting collection of species that were recently isolated after the end of the Ice Age. What have they become? They're, they're various species of sticklebacks. They stayed as fish? Well, of course. Can you think of any observable evidence where there was a change of kinds? Fish. Human beings are still fish. Human beings are fish? Why, yes, of course they are. How long did that take? A couple of billions of years, millions. A couple of millions? How is that observable? It's not. We came out of the ground as a mammal, and one mammal created... Come out of the ground? Didn't you come out of the sea? Uh, well, initially in the beginning, we came out of the ground and the sea after the great destruction of the... the... So do we have lungs or gills when we came out of the sea? You want to know something? Those that were in the sea, I guess, had gills, and those that were on land had lungs. But if we came out of the sea, we had you, gills in the sea. You want to know something? Who knows that when we came out of the sea or we came out, we evolved from mammals? So you don't know? Uh, of course I don't know. I'm accepting that they did their science correctly. Would you give me an example of Darwinian evolution, not adaptation or speciation, but a change of kinds? <laughs> These are changes of kinds. They're still fish. They're distinctly different fish. We have thousands of examples. Give me, can you give me one? I can give you, I can give you thousands, just yeah. one. For instance, I would say, uh, look at Lenski's experiments with bacteria then. So what do the bacteria become? The bacteria are still bacteria, of course. So that's not Darwinian evolution. That's not a change of kinds, is it? It, it is a change, it is a change in the genetic makeup of the bacteria, which is... still bacteria. So what do the bacteria become? Uh, a new kind of bacterium. Still bacteria, there's no change of kinds. To summarize, the observable evidence that you give me for Darwinian evolution is bacteria becoming bacteria. No, it is bacteria acquiring new metabolic capabilities. You said before that there, are, there is lots of evidence for evolution. I just want one observable evidence for Darwinian evolution, no, no. just one. But I gave you some. You don't want... Not some, I want one. Wait, you don't want that. That's I want one. Yes, well. I do. I'm pleading no, with you. You, said, you asked me to tell you... You asked me to tell you when I've watched one species evolve into another. Isn't that right? No, one kind into another. There's 14, is it 14 different definitions of species? So I want a change of a kind. When you're talking about kinds or change in families, you're, you're actually talking about, about macro evolution. You're talking about um, uh, changes on the level of, that separate, say, cats from dogs. So could you give me any examples of Darwinian evolution? Well, uh, when you say examples of that, then you have to sort of look at over a longer time frame. It has nothing to do with faith. Faith is something that I have to, unseen, I have to believe in. That's it, unseen. Look, right. do you believe evolution? Of course I do. Are you a believer in evolution? Yes, I am. When did you start to believe evolution? I started to believe evolution when I started to think out for myself. Is evolution a belief? Evolu evo well, you know something? Evolution is a is a thought process, is, is coming to terms and, and, and checking out all the, alterna all the alternatives, like uh, taking a look at the, the religion, man-made religions. Let me ask you again, is evolution a belief? No, evolution is, well, yeah, in a, in a word, yeah, I could say it, w it could be a belief. When you say change of kind, you mean the evolution of one species from another or to another? Yes, we have that in action, actually, in the Galapagos. Could you give me one instance? Yeah. We have an example from a group of birds called Darwin's finches. Can you take a look at the difference between the finches on the islands that all started out? I mean, that's very, very observable. But that's not Darwinian evolution. There's been no change of kinds. How much did the finches become? They become genetically new and anatomically new, recognizably different species. So they're still finches? Well, of course they're still finches, yeah. There's no change of, no change of kind. Little birds that he, uh, that he had observed that... Oh, what did they become? Um... Their beaks, their beak shapes, they're, they're still birds. 
Yes, three finches that turn into different types of birds. Based They're on still species. finches. Well, for example, Darwin and, and his study on evolution of uh, the birds on the island that he went on to there. Their beaks changed? Their beaks. Uh, They're still birds. There's no change of kinds. That's within no, no, no. the kind. It's evolution on the beaks. That's so that's called adaptation. It's not Darwinian evolution. There's no change of kinds. There's no different animal involved. I want something that shows me Darwin's belief in the change of kinds is scientific. Darwin spoke of a change of kind. Can you think of any observable evidence for Darwinian evolution with this change of kind? Uh, change of kind. Kind. Uh, I'm going to have to think about that one a little longer. You give me anything that I can see, observe, and test, which is the scientific method for Darwinian evolution, a change of kinds. Test and observe. Could you give me observable evidence, which is the scientific method for Darwinian evolution, a change of kinds? Okay, I gotta think about it. <laughs> um, so you want the evidence of it? I would say... Not, I think. Uh, hmm. It's a hard question, actually. So, you repeat the question again. Could you give me any observable evidence, just one, for Darwinian evolution? Uh, let me think about that for a sec. Um, hmm. Observable evidence. Something where we don't have to exercise faith. Something that can be observed, like the scientific process, observable. Hmm. That's a good question. That one I'm not quite sure. So you can't think of any observable evidence for evolution? No. How do you know it's true? Hmm. I'm not sure. So Darwinian evolution is not observable, it's not scientific. I guess so. So it's unscientific, you can't prove it. It's scientific, actually. You could prove it. It could be proven, just... Do it for me. Ah, that's hard. I don't got... I don't... It's just... That's just too broad of a... It's of unobservable. A that's why you need millions of years. Yes, exactly. Well, you're trusting the biology majors and the biology professors know what they're talking about. Yeah. And, and they can't even give me a... They can't even give me evidence of a change of kinds. Well, I'm, well, then there isn't one. If they don't give it, then I don't. I wouldn't say there was. Yeah. I just go on what I've seen and what I've learned from. Class. So you believe? Yeah. You know what that's called? What? Blind faith. Blind faith. <laughs> faith is the great cop out, the great excuse to evade the need to think and evaluate evidence. Richard Dawkins. Do you believe in intelligent design? Of course not. Do you think everything is intelligently designed? Um, no, I don't believe that. Things are intelligently designed. Okay, you seem like an intelligent person, so I'm going to ask you something. I'd like you to make me a rose, okay? How would you make a rose? I don't have the, the, the capabilities to do no, that. Hang on. No, it's not intelligently designed, so you should better whip me up a rose real quick. Do you believe a rose is intelligently designed? Definitely not. In order for me to know what to make, I have to know what a rose is. Well, it's got a seed, so you've got to start with nothing, and you've got to create a seed from nothing. Oh. Can you do that? No, I can't. Could you make a rose from nothing? No. You can't really make something from nothing. It's it's just basic, you know, science. A rose from nothing? A rose. Just like, I, I can't, honestly. Why not? Me, I just, I have no supernatural abilities. All the geniuses in the world can't make a grain of sand from nothing. We don't know where to start. I can't. Why not? I don't have millions, billions of years. Uh, that would be physically impossible. I mean, I would have to, that's, that's not possible. So how could you say everything is not intelligently designed? Where does that leave you on the scale of intelligence if you say everything's not intelligently designed and you can't even make a rose? Why do you think there's no one teaching intelligent design at UCLA? Because they're not allowed to. 
We can teach anything we want. There's a reason intelligent design isn't taught in our learning institutions. According to physicist Victor Stinger, the legal staff of Freedom From Religion Foundation, a church-state watchdog group, has had remarkable success in convincing many institutions, such as school boards and town councils, that they are breaking constitutional law when they sponsor sectarian activities. That includes intelligent design. When the authorities can't be convinced, Freedom From Religion Foundation sues, and it wins more often than not. There was nothing in the beginning, big explosion of nothing, it became something, and then it came into a rose and giraffes and horses and cows. I'm not saying that, that that's what happened. I'm just saying I don't know what happened. That's what, that's what, that's what scientists are, are, have theorized has happened. And we believe them. To a point. So you've got faith. That is true, yeah. Could you give me a definition of vestigials? How's that back up evolution? Vestigial is, uh, it's like, I'm not a biologist, so I'm kind of fuzzy here, but it's, it's like a remaining organ that is not used. Like, for instance, our appendix. Mm -hmm. Uh, rabbits have huge appendix for digestion of grass. We still have a vestigial appendix. Or the appendix has no use? Which we can think of right now. Your uh, coccyx bone, that was, you know, many people regard that as the tail of the humans. The human tailbone is said to be vestigial. That is, it's an evolutionary leftover proving that we're related to primates. However, it's not a tailbone, it's the coccyx vertebrae. The tailbone derived its name because some people believe it's a leftover part from human evolution, though the notion that the tailbone serves no purpose is wrong. The coccyx is an extremely important source of attachment for tendons, ligaments, and muscles. Evolutionists also claim that the appendix is vestigial, but it's not. The appendix is actually part of the human immune system. According to Scientific American, for years, the appendix was credited with very little physiological function. We now know, however, that the appendix serves an important role in the fetus and in young adults. Among adult humans, the appendix is now thought to be involved primarily in the immune functions. I would consider myself an atheist, yeah. Can you think of any famous atheists? Uh, I believe, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, I can't agree to the claims by atheists that I'm one of that community. Can you name a few? Uh, famous atheists. Uh, apparently not. Oh, start with Isaac Newton. Isaac Newton said, The most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. Can you think of any famous atheists? Yeah. No. A famous atheist. Yeah, a famous atheist. Yeah, my dad. <laughs> He's not famous. <laughs> the skeptics' websites often include examples of famous atheists in an attempt to win converts. But more often than not, the famous personalities cited are not actually atheists. This is a popular atheist poster on which are Ernest Hemingway, Abraham Lincoln, Carl Sagan, Mark Twain, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, Albert Einstein, and Charles Darwin, along with the words, atheism, good enough for these idiots. Clearly, atheism is for intellectuals. But one moment, Abraham Lincoln wasn't an atheist. He said, I know that the Lord is always on the side of the right, but it's my constant anxiety and prayer that I and this nation should be on the Lord's side. Neither was Carl Sagan. He clearly stated, I am an agnostic. Mark Twain hated religion, but he certainly wasn't an atheist, saying, None of us can be as great as God, but any of us can be as good. Benjamin Franklin said, God governs in the affairs of men. You'll find Thomas Edison listed on celebrity atheists, on positive atheism, and other atheist websites. But he wasn't an atheist. He said, There is a great directing head of people and things, a supreme being who looks after the destinies of the world. Thomas Jefferson said, Say nothing of my religion. It is known to myself and my God alone. Albert Einstein rejected the Bible as the word of God and said that the Creator was unknowable and that God being personal was childlike. He lamented, in view of such harmony in the cosmos which I, with my limited human understanding, am able to recognize, there are yet people who say there is no God. Well, what really makes me angry is that they quote me to support such views. He categorically said, I am not an atheist. And when referring to those who deny the Creator, he used the term fanatical atheists. 
Charles Darwin said, I have never been an atheist. So out of the eight famous men on the poster, there was only one who was an atheist, Ernest Hemingway. According to his biographer, back in 1961, Hemingway, quote, pushed two shells into the 12-gauge Boss shotgun, put the end of the barrel into his mouth, pulled the trigger, and blew out his brains. There's your poster boy when it comes to atheism.